A body is found near Oil Nut Bay Virgin Gorda. Health Minister says that the incinerator solution is forthcoming. Honorable Vincent Wheatley says that the Ecosystem Accounting Partnership is producing results. The BVI suffers a 14-0 loss at the World Cup qualifiers, and the BVI Humane Society has been serving since 1975. All this and more when 284 News returns. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Live stream cable TV is here with CCT Live. Access over 80 channels that you can watch either at home or when you're on the go. And don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Rewind and watch in your own time. Come to CCT today and ask about our one-month free trial offer. CCT Live. Bring it home. Welcome viewers, I'm Nia Douglas coming to you live from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. It's Monday, February 21st, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to 284 News tonight. Starting off today's news, a statement received by the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force yesterday, Sunday, February 20th, says that police have found a male body in the waters near Oil Nut Bay. The statement said police can confirm that the body of a black male was found in the water near Oil Nut Bay, Virgin Gorda this morning. Faisar responded and recovered the body. The death was pronounced at the scene around noon. This death is not considered suspicious at this time. No other details are available. Now viewers, similarly, on February 8th, a 75-year-old male visitor to the territory was retrieved unresponsive from the water near Peter Island and subsequently pronounced dead. Initial inquiries suggest that he fell overboard just after noon while sailing on a moorings yacht. In other news, the Health Minister, Honorable Carvin Malone, is confident that a solution for the inactive incinerator at Pockwood Pond will be forthcoming and completed within the next four to five months. The minister made this comment during a recent interview with 284 News, where he said that a solution for the recent fire-damaged incinerator will not take up to 18 months, which was the case after the incinerator was damaged in 2018 after a fire. He said the relevant authorities will be discussing whether it is best to repair the incinerator or come up with a better solution to deal with a solid waste issue. now on how we can get it repaired if that is the route that we're going. Um, we are already in contact with Institec, who is a proprietary manufacturer of this particular incinerator. And, the, and we, are, we will be getting a pricing on the, a pricing on the replacement in, uh, parts needed. Both in terms of um, both in terms of the wiring and the and the control panels and the sub panels that we have, and so it would not at all take that inordinate amount of time. Number one, number two, we're looking in terms of um, a particular uh, what do you call it packaged incinerator plants. Uh, we have sourced one or two companies that. Uh, well, one company in the UK that provides such, and we're looking at the feasibility of having some units bought in, both for Virgin Guarda and for Tortola, so that we can then look in the interim in terms of getting this done. So we, we're going to price this, we're going to source this, and we're going to see what is most efficient. Minister Malone also said that he is aware of the issue experienced with the contracted Consitec Systems, LLC, which is responsible for the replacement parts of the incinerator. In addition to the long overdue scrubber, which has been promised for several years, Minister Malone said there are other parts that have been ordered from the company that are yet to arrive in the territory. But we know we have issues with the particular company, as I had mentioned before, 
because we have the scrubber, which never came six years in the making and never was delivered. We have the conveyor belts that is, that is failing us from time to time, and we have issues in terms of the delivery. We have other, um, other items, major items, on that that we're having difficulty in terms of the timing for deliveries. So we're searching and we're going to do whatever is required in order for us to be able to get this done efficiently. And if it means that we have to um, uh, look at other sources until when wood is completed in terms uh, in terms of specifying the permanent equipment, then we're going to look at other ways in which we can get the tertiary treatment of waste done in an efficient manner immediately. Um, within a uh, three, four, five month period might well be the max that we might have to look at. In the meantime, the health minister said the recent fire at the incinerator has caused the ministry to speed up their plans for tertiary solid waste treatment plant in the BVI. He said a number of locations on Tartola and Virgin Gorda have already been identified as potential spots for the plant. Three to four places have now been identified on Tortola. We are looking at it in Virgin Gorda and we've identified one or two places where this could be safely disposed of. And Agata, we have uh, two choices, either to uh, transpose or transfer the particular um, the untreated influent or the waste to Virgin Gorda, for instance, and we're looking in terms of procuring a tertiary treatment equipment for Virgin Gorda, tertiary treatment equipment for Tortola, and uh, servicing all four main islands and the sister islands where you have resorts. So we're looking at this, we are determining what is best, and I think that with this uh, disaster, you can call it, um, we would we have hastened the pace the pace of this because um, no longer can we have the fires burning in Virgin Gorda in Tortola on uh, Anagata. Right now we have a, we have an efficient transposition transpose a transportation of the waste from Justin Dyke, so that is under control somewhat. But we must get these other issues um, solved, and we are resolved to do it. Now, viewers, the Department of Waste Management said until the incinerator is fixed, the accumulated garbage collected in the territory will be trucked to the landfill. Up next, Honorable Vincent Wheatley says that an ecosystem accounting partnership is producing results. This story and more after a quick word from our sponsors. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services, one-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only, registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too, offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. The wait is over. CCT Fire is here. Experience ultra fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all new fire blazing, super fast CCT Fire Network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. You value traditions. To You value music. You value education. Family. I love you. <laughs> Service. Thank you. You're welcome. Love. Life. At Popular, we're committed to you and everything our community values. 
for the things you value the most. Count on us. Popular. Welcome back, viewers. An ecosystem accounting partnership, which was formed in 2019, is said to be producing results, with plans in place to publish the 2020 ecosystem accounts with hopes of providing evidence to support environmental and economic management for the territory. In an official comment through the Government Information Services, Minister for Natural Resources, Labor and Immigration, Honorable Vincent Wheatley said, the 2020 ecosystem accounts continue to build on the information gathered on the 2019 ecosystem accounts on the state of coastal, marine and terrestrial habits and their direct benefits and several sectors of our economy. He added, it is also crucial that we continue to build our local capacity to engage in ecosystem accounting. Local practitioners have the opportunity to take full advantage of the training that will take place while the team from EFTEC, Economics for the Environment Consultant, Consultancy Limited, sorry, are in the territory, which will then improve our future capacity to update the national green accounts for the territory. Overall, the minister said that he is pleased that the partnership that was built to protect and preserve the natural resources of the territory is continuing to produce results. The account is said to have been developed with financial support from the Darwin Initiative, funded by the UK government, and delivered through a partnership between EFTEC, the Joint Nature Conservation Committee and the Ministry of Natural Resources, Labour and Immigration, as part of the Caribbean Overseas Territories Regional Natural Capital Accounting Programme. Support is also provided across five Caribbean Overseas Territories, Anguilla, Cayman Islands, Montserrat, Turks and Caicos, and the Virgin Islands. In other news, the BVI women's national football team suffered a huge defeat in their first game on the CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers against Cuba over the weekend. Playing on Saturday, February 19th at the Estadio General Francisco Marzan Stadium in Honduras, the national team went down 14 goals to nil in their opening game. Despite the heavy loss, goalkeeper Kimberly Smith had a standout performance, making several saves to frustrate the Cubans. However, the most impressive performance on the day belonged to Cuba's Yeranis Lee, who tallied six goals in the 14-0 victory, which puts her team at the top of the table with a perfect record of two wins from two games. Our Kamal Haynes spoke to head coach Wayne Phillip in an exclusive interview earlier today team is um, really together and um, we keep motivating the team um, they have they have a high spirit you know they they keep um, focused all the time so um all in all we are we are ready to go tomorrow we are feeling strong ready to, and united okay and um in terms of the preparations ahead of the game we would have seen several media releases from the bva football association um, just speaking on some of the practices that would have been happening prior to leaving on the Thursday to head over there to Honduras. Um, speak to the training sessions. Um, did the team get enough training sessions prior to this um, very pivotal international tournament? Well, we could have done better. Um, the problem is that um, most of our players are away. So um, some are in the States and some are right in, in England. So to get them together have been a challenge, but we have done most of what we could and we are, we, um, we are putting plans in place to better um, that movement. Coach Philip also highlighted some of the positives from Saturday's defeat. He said more than half of the present team is 16 years or younger, and the experience gained from the tournament will strengthen each of the players' game. What the, the first thing I would point out on is um, they never gave up. They kept fighting, and they had a good fighting spirit. I mean, Cuba had... Um, was spreading our, our defense and moving the ball from left to right, but the girls kept to it and, you know, they, they, they were focused. Just that, we just, and the, the string passes, you could see some nice passes from the defense as well. Um, you know, our goalkeeper had a, uh, had a great game. So there are a lot of things that we could look forward to in the future. That we, we also spoke to Captain Ariel Mohammed, who said that the girls have been bonding well since uniting as a team in Honduras. Well, we had a football camp where the, some of the English players came together and we were able to train as a team and get some practices in. It's more of like bonding and getting to know each other. Um, then it was a new experience for me as well, being such a huge 
tournament, a big competition, and having that role as a leader. But it was it was a great experience, and the team it has very high like spirits. The the energy is still up. We aren't down after the game. We're looking forward to the next game, which is really nice. Yes, and you, you, you say you guys are looking forward to the next game and you, you guys are actually using this time to also bond as well. Uh, so speak about the positive that you would have seen from a captain perspective because obviously as a captain there are several players that I assume would look up to you as a captain and certain players that would probably come and confide in you regarding certain things. But speak about um, that from, from that particular perspective. Well, um, the players come to me and we... If there's anything we need to approve on, they would talk to me about it. And we're all just sharing like what we think we could do better and what has gone well. And we would come and share that to a coach as well. So the team's just really coming together and just sharing how they feel about it. Viewers, the BVI's next game of the tournament will be tomorrow, Tuesday, February 22nd, against the host team, Honduras. That game will be played at 5.30 p.m. BVI time. Also, to watch the full exclusive interview with Coach Philip and Captain Mohammed, log on to our social media pages at 8 p.m. this evening. Up next, Ron Grant has a special report on the BVI Humane Society. Stay tuned. A show poised to help guide modern-day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. It doesn't always involve suits and a... Uh, wait... Bow ties, but raw, real-life lessons that translate to grounded, community-minded, well-rounded men. This season, I'm taking you on an entirely different journey, from chefs to dancers, philanthropists, communications specialists, and much more. I'm heading outside in the field to share the journey of some of the BBI's best and brightest men. From East End to West End, Bojangara, Jasmine, not forgetting Annie Gara. Our Virgin Islands gentlemen are doing the damn thing, and I'm so proud. Get ready to reason, reflect, and redirect. We are the movers and shakers of this generation, and we ain't afraid to show it. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, Season 3, by yours truly, Ron Grant, raising a generation of greatness. There's a reason you get up on a morning. A reason you pick yourself up, start the day. Maybe it's sheer grit. Maybe it's your ethics. Maybe it's because you know people like you are waiting for people just like you. We all have our reasons and for Republic Bank that reason is you. Every little thing, every big thing, it's all about making a difference in your life. Because after 182 years, if it's one thing we're sure about, is that the difference is you. We're here to help. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Thanks for sticking with us. The Humane Society of the BVI is a non-profit organization founded in 1975 and is the only animal shelter in the BVI that offers a safe shelter to dogs and puppies, cats and kittens that have been abandoned, are unwanted, and in some cases severely mistreated and abused. Our Ron Grant has this very special report. Hello viewers, as you can see I am at the BVI Humane Society here in Johnson Gut and I literally just fell in love with a puppy that someone literally brought in. Um, as you know, the BVI Humane Society has been around since 1975, essentially offering one of the most essential services to the British Virgin Islands. All across the territory, you would see stray dogs, you would see abandoned dogs, you would see dogs that really just need a home. And that is essentially what the BVI Humane Society is offering. Uh, we have a number of services here, and we're going to put that into perspective for you. So let's go. The purpose of the Humane Society Animal Shelter is to find new homes for the abandoned animals presently in care. The shelter is always seeking residents who can bring a dog or cat home and give it the love and care it so desperately needs. Vijay Basundat is the Humane Society's shelter manager and has worked at the Humane Society for over 20 years. 
Believe it or not, VJ knows all the dogs and cats by name and can help you find the perfect pet if you are interested in adoption. He also enjoys educating our local children on how to take care of animals. We caught up with him to discuss the overall needs of the shelter. So here at the Humane Society, you know, we do offer different services and we offer boarding for animals. If you, if you go away on a vacation, you have no way of taking animals. We do offer that as a service, which brings us some sort of capital to keep the shelter functional. And we do have uh, cats and puppies and adult dogs and adult cats up for adoption. And, um, you know, right now we have an influx of over 75 adult dogs looking for home. And the reason why, you know, the pandemic, the hurricane, after the pandemic, a lot of people had to dunk size and they had pets they couldn't take to the, to the next apartment, so they end up being here at the shelter. Once they come in here, we try to rehabilitate and try to find homes for them. The adult dogs are very difficult to find homes. And the puppies seem to go much faster, and we do have a, a, a great partnership with a, a non-profit called Paws BVI, which we do a lot of spaying and neutering through Paws BVI. And they have a program that called Animals with Wings, which we partner with, with a lot of different shelters in the U.S. And St. Thomas, you know, Puerto Rico, that we send small animals to different shelters because, or, you know, we cannot take all the animals here. We don't have that capacity of space to, to accommodate all these. So we get stuck with the bigger dogs because with Paws BVI and Animals with Wings program, if they're over 20 pounds, they cannot fly. So they need to be under 20 pounds because they go in the cabin with, with a, a passenger, which is a, you can escort a dog, you know, they take care of all expense. If you're here on vacation, you want to take a dog back to the States as a, just an escort, talk, call us, call Paws BVI, we will sort everything out. All you gotta do is just take a dog on the ferry and the plane. Somebody's gonna be on the other end to receive, to receive the animals. So most of the time we get stuck with the adult dogs because with all the new regulation and rules that in place when it comes to flying, the adult dogs cannot fly. And there are certain times in the year which they're embargo on flights, meaning if it's too hot, they cannot travel, or if it's too cold, they cannot travel. And being in, in the BVI, we don't really have an international airport, and most of the planes are small, the big, the, the big crates cannot go on the plane. So we get stuck with the, with the adult dogs. So if you're ever looking for a dog, you know, for just say a protection animal, just a guard dog for your yard, we have dogs in, in the yard, we'll do that. If you're looking just for a companion, for some therapy, we have dogs in the yard, we'll do that. If you're just looking for some love and cuddles and licks, we have dogs in the yard, gonna do that. So come on down to the shelter and see what we have. We have so many animals looking for home. Come on, give these guys a second chance in life. We are a non-profit organization. We receive no funding from government at all. So basically we re rely on the public help, donation, you know, monetary service, voluntary service, and things that, you know, we always need, you know, financial help because we do have a vet bill when the month is up to pay. We do have an overhead, you know, light, water. We have rent to pay, we have staff to pay, utilities, um, food for the animals, and uh, cleaning supply to keep the place sanitized. And, um, you know, we just, we just need everything that you could get, the public could give us to, to keep the shelter function. And uh, we're in process of um, building a new shelter. And uh, hopefully, before the year is and we could break some sort of ground. We do have a, a plot of land being purchased in Josiah's Bay, um, which been paid for it. And we're supposed to build before Irma. But Irma came, destroyed everything. The money we had in the bank, we had to put it to into this shelter to keep it functional. Because we could, just couldn't close the door, we had to keep the door open for the public. And then we went back to the drawing board and came up with another plan, then the pandemic came. So it's been, it's been set back, but you know, we reached a point that we actually raised some money now that we could actually break ground, hopefully before the year is finished. And we do have a website, which is very, you know, transparent. We do have all the plans and everything as the, the public need to know, it's right there. You know, you know it's, it's uh, bvihumanesociety.org. And we do have a very functional Facebook daily update and it's Humane Society at the BVI or on Facebook. And our telephone number is 494-2284 or 494-9008. Or you could just reach me personally on, on my cell, 540-2299. We do have a board of directors and that's else, you know, you, you can reach her as well. She's very good at, at responding back to emails. So you, you have any question, you have anything, just send us an email. 
Unfortunately, the shelter has been given notice of the lease of their current premises in Johnson Gut and are now seeking funds to develop property in Josiah's Bay for a new and improved state-of-the-art humane compound. The aim is to build a larger and more modern shelter with larger cages, cat pens, dog runs, veterinarian and boarding facilities. The staff at the Humane Society are very committed to the animal shelter, but they need your help. They can use dog walkers, cleaners, vet runners, fundraising initiatives, and much more. As any um, nonprofit organization or charity, we always rely on volunteer. And you know, we have a, a volunteer program happening here right now with the high schools and the primary schools. A lot of kids have to finish certain hours before the curriculum is finished throughout the year. So that's been doing pretty good. I'm, I'm having such an influx, but you know, those, those, are, those are little kids are just in the afternoon. But we do need volunteer, like when we have fundraising events, you know, we do the game at night once a year. We need volunteer, we do the dog show once a year. We need volunteer, even here, to walk the dogs in the morning and walk them in the afternoon. They, did, they do need exercise. And as you guys can see, most of them are in cages and we don't have the, the space to put them out in the yard. So we always ask in the public, you know, you have an hour or two, come by and it's exercise as well. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a, a therapy, you know. You could come and take an animal for a day, go to the beach, relax. You could even take one home for, for a night. And we do have a foster program, you know. Um, if you can't adopt, you could foster. Meaning if you're home for the weekend or if we ever have a, a shutdown again, a lockdown. Like when we had the, pan, the pandemic, a lot of people was home when they were bored. So they came and take a dog for the, for the, for the time they're being home fostering. And, um, you know, we always need volunteers like to cut the bushes, clean the yards, any kind of repair, you know just to cut back on expense. So if you have the strength and the power and the, and the free will, you know, come on to the shelter and give us a hand. Residents can also visit the Humane Society's website at humanesociety.org and make monetary donations or supplies of food. Anything is welcome. If you cannot commit to taking an animal forever, then consider fostering for a few days, weeks, or months. Ron Grant reporting for 284 News. Well, that's it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com. And like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Nia Douglas. I'll see you again tomorrow as we deliver your daily dose of local, regional, and international content. 284 News, your source for honest and impartial news, right here on 284 Media. Happy Monday, everybody. Have a great evening. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Live stream cable TV is here with CCT Live. Access over 80 channels that you can watch either at home or when you're on the go. And don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Rewind and watch in your own time. Come to CCT today and ask about our one month free trial offer. CCT Live, bring it home. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services, one-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only, registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals.